it's gonna be great. Yay! Welcome everybody. Hi everyone. Welcome. Hello. Share Hello. with us. Hi. Where Good you evening. Are from on the comments. Yes, please share where you're from. Everybody coming. Share in. where you're from. We want to know where you are coming to visit us today. Thank you for joining us. Oh, the room is growing. I see the numbers. Yeah. Florida. Dubai. Dubai. Work. Portland. Hi. Tijuana. Oh, Claudio. That's a friend of mine from DJ. Yay. <laughs> Let's go to TJ. Yeah, we have to all go someday. Netherlands. South Africa, yeah. South Africa. Fan of Steady Jazz. <laughs> New York, India. This is really cool. A lot of guys in the room. Hawaii. Okay, Thank you for joining us. Ghana. Woo! More people in the room before we start. I want to go to India. Right? Yeah, definitely. Florida. Brooklyn, hey. <laughs> a lot of a lot of people from India. Hey. A lot of people from India. Thank you for joining us. Atlanta, Bay Area. Veracruz. Haha. <laughs> All right. Looks like we're getting oh, a lot of people. Good, Brazil, that's Aline. Yes, Aline. We love Aline. Study cam up. Hi. Welcome everybody. All right. Everybody ready to get started? Yes. All right. So this is our latest installment of our Steady School and Learn Filmmaking live Zoom Q&A. This time we're doing a, a three guest special with Trinity operators from around the world. And we have three operators from different countries here with us today. Uh, we developed Steady School with the idea of completing a single take Steady Camp shot as a team. And we try to teach people how to work together to execute the shot because it's more than just the operator. It's the assistants, it's the DPs, it's the directors, it's the actors. It's, it's a community-based thing. So uh, just like to welcome everybody to our program today. And also one thing I'd like to say real quick is I wanted to take a moment of silence for everybody around the world that is going through a tough time that may have lost some loved ones along the way right now because we're in an unsure time right now, and we all are trying to stay strong together. And we've had people that we know, family members, friends, a lot of people have left us, and we're very, very saddened by that. And we wanna continue and stay positive and send love to everyone. So if you could all join me for a moment of silence, please. All right, thank you, thank you. Thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you everybody for staying strong and awesome. And yeah, let's, let's go right into the introductions, Chris. Perfect, so we're gonna introduce the panelists first. If Joe, you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Joseph Frederick. Um, I'm based out of Atlanta. Um, I'm a future Steadicam operator. Um, I practiced with the Trinity before, um, so I'm just here to just seek knowledge and, uh, you know, just just gain knowledge just like everybody else. So, thank you, Joel. Thank you for being here with us. And now we're going with Fernando. Would you be so kind to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Fernando Vasquez, and I'm based in Mexico. I'm um, I'm trained to be a operator of Steadicam, Steadicam, and Trinity, and yeah, also just here to to learn. Thank you, Fernando, for being here with us. And now we're going with Jess. Could you introduce yourself and the Steady School? Yes, hi, Jessica Lopez, co-founder of Steady School. I'm a camera operator, Steady Cam operator based in Los Angeles and Atlanta. And yes, uh, just bringing everybody together for this 
Q&A, which is actually sadly our final Q&A for a while. We're gonna do some restructuring with the Steady School program online. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. And please don't forget to put your Q questions in the Q&A box on the bottom. My name is Christian Aid. I am an LA-based ba actress, and I currently volunteer for the SOC, the Steady School, and the Learn Filmmaking channel. So Learn Filmmaking is a community on Instagram. If you don't follow us, please do so at Learn Filmmaking on Instagram. And we love to share the work of all the creative individuals around the world. So we're here together as a community. Now we are going to introduce our guests. So we have Fare. Would you be so kind to introduce yourself? Sure. This is Fares Corbani, SOC. I'm a camera operator specialized in Trinity Steadicam. Uh, also, I do some drone camera operating and uh, underwater since I'm a dive master. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're happy. <laughs> and uh, I'm based in Beirut. I work internationally as well. I'm also a certified Trinity trainer for Ari. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all guys, because I've seen throughout those days how much effort you put in this. And uh, really, the energy you're spreading, it's, it's amazing. Those vibes are really incredible. So really keep it up. You have all my support from here. Keep it up, Jess, you're amazing. And also Matt, who's not here. Keep it up, guys. Thanks, Fair. Thank you for that. And that's awesome that you do underwater. We need to yeah. do a, a segment on underwater filmmaking one day. Sure, whenever you want. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Now we go to Niels. Could you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Niels Lindelin. I'm a camera operator based in Los Angeles. And uh, like Fares, I'm specializing in Trinity and Steadicam and a little bit of drone and underwater. Thank you, Niels. Welcome. And now we have Fava. Could you introduce yourself? Hi, guys. My name is Fao Solano. I'm based in Mexico City. I'm a Trinity operator, camera operator, and specialized too in um, gimbals and other types of uh, stabil camera stabilizers. And um, I'm very happy to enjoy with you uh, this experience. Thanks, uh, Learn Filmmaking and Steady Yes, Steady School, to make this possible. Thank you and welcome to all. So if you all know, we have a very diverse group today from the Middle East, LA and Mexico. So share your questions that you have for all these different markets. They are more willing to answer all your questions that you have. So now, uh, Jessica, do you have a question for Faris? Yes, Faris, we're going to start you off with the first round. Um, what drew you to Steadicam? Do you have any mentors? Okay. Well, uh, back in the days when I started my career as a camera operator, I always had that curiosity about the steady cam when I used to see operators on set. Like I thought it was magic, like how is that operator working and the camera is still stabilized near it. Because once you don't know anything about steady cam, it's really so complicated for you to start and learn about it. So I started doing my research and I decided to go and do my first workshop on the steady cam in Germany. Uh, I did that at the Sachter Academy with Kurt Scaler as well. Uh, and since then, uh, answering your question also, he became my mentor for the last decade and with whom I really developed my career and my skills so closely with him. Uh, in 2017, I decided to invest in the Trinity, which really opened up a lot of opportunities for me and it allowed me to widen my horizon. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and two years later, after I started doing a lot of international jobs, Kurt also trusted me and gave me the certification of becoming a trainer for Ari, which was my pleasure as well. And I consider it not a job, I consider it as a passion because uh, my main job is still as a camera operator in the film industry, but uh, doing a training and help and uh, to, be, to be teaching people on Trinity is more like spreading the word on it, not only as a job. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's my answer. Okay, well, I have your reel, uh, highlight reel we made for you. Here it is, uh -huh. check it out. Yeah, that was in China at one of the workshops for Ari China as well. Uh, that's a commercial for BMW. It shows the ability of the Trinity to go from high mode to low mode in the same shot. Yeah, this is one of the most difficult setups. 
I've done. I was sitting on the top of a car and operating the Trinity inside the car. That's really interesting because we did in this commercial in Poland. It was the first and only one shot live commercial on air. So we did 120 rehearsals for a full week. And then on the 121st, we went live on air for a one shot, for a one minute one shot. So it was, the adrenaline level was so high as well. That was interesting. It's a nice end shot. Yeah. So I stepped on the crane here when I opened the door. That was in Thailand also. It's a commercial for Leitch beer. It's a Polish beer. That's a Chinatown in uh, Thailand as well, in Bangkok. That's also in Thailand, same commercial. Yeah, not nice edit, by the way. You're w well put together. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's a commercial here in Lebanon for the for center point. It's a big mall. That's a telecom commercial. Yeah, that's, that was back on the Segway days because Recently, I sold the Segway because with the Trinity, I don't feel safe with the Segway anymore. And especially that recently, like two months ago, the Segway company closed. So I moved from Segway to Rickshaw, which is more safe and precise as well. Hey, nice. Yeah. Smart Thank you for the reel. Yeah, uh, our reels are put together by one of our study school students, Merlin Showalter. Uh, at That's off. He's pretty awesome. He's been on our Zooms as well in the past, but okay. he's been doing this. It's been very nice. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's see. Fernando, do you have a question for Niels? Hold on. Yep, there it is. I do. Yes, I do. Let me just. <laughs> How about you want, you want me to pull up his reel first? Yeah. All right, Neil. <laughs> We made this for you, Niels. Oops. Sorry, as you can see, I'm not mad. <laughs> Here it is. Nope. Sorry. I'll get Merlin that. is gonna have to start charging uh, people to start making the reels. If you're hearing this, Merlin, yeah, that's just... a side job. There it is. So this is an Apple commercial. That looks like some kind of doggy cam. Yeah, this is a, a real DIY body mount thing that we rigged up with just a baby pin or a baby board. And let's see, stand on. A lot of this stuff, you're a cinematographer as well. Yeah, a lot of this is my earlier uh, work, actually. This is uh, a student film I DP'd and was operating on. The shot took two operators, one on each side of the fence. Ah. It was a handoff. Up here, these are all on. Uh, the 235, which is hard to get in the Trinity. <laughs> yeah. I was jealous you did this music video, by the way. Uh, this is probably maybe my favorite job I've done. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. You're on Fremont Street, right? Yep. In Vegas? Yeah, North Vegas. So cool. Yeah. The weekend. Yeah, and Abel is a, a dream to work with. He's, he's really professional. We're on grip tricks here. I really like the Trinity in conjunction with that. Nice. Very dynamic shots and big moves. You don't have to wear it. Yeah. <laughs> it's always nice. The whip pans are pretty amazing. Yeah, Trinity uh, it really changes the game on the whip pan. <laughs> really makes it a lot easier. And this blew up on social media. I remember when this came out. Uh, a quarter inch of clearance on on the top and the bottom for this show. How many uh, rehearsals? Um, you know, I I got the dimensions of the window and I did hundreds, countless rehearsals at home. I, I did a mock up on my own car with some gaff tape just to make the window the right size. 
and I spent probably a solid two days passing it through there. So then when we um, shot the actual date, that was take seven. Wow. Yeah, that's very I have the question, Jessica. Can I ask them? Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay, if you were practicing Steadicam and Trinity, let's say just starting from the beginning, Niels, mm -hmm. what would you fo focus on learning first? Um, I would focus on learning whatever you have access to. Um, let's, let's say I have access to both. To both. Yeah. Then I guess I would say to, to follow your passion. <laughs> Um, if one is, is more rewarding for you than the other or more interesting to you than the other or you think it serves the type of projects that you're interested in better than the other one, then choose that. Okay. Um, but I would say, you know, probably a lot of people don't have access to both types of systems. And the most important thing is to just practice because even if you don't have anything, if you just have a, a camera on a phone, um, if you have someone willing to walk around the space with you, then you can learn the fundamental skills of timing and being in the right position and framing and coordinating with somebody else to get the shot right. Um, you know, all kinds of things like that before you move into the, the more complicated equipment. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Faba. Joe, do you have a question for Faba? Oh, yep, you got it. I do. Uh, let's see. Um, do you recommend someone new to study cam to purchase a Trinity? Or should they just learn standard uh, operating first before getting into the Trinity? Uh, did I recommend it? Um, Trinity is a reality and change the game, you know? And when you start to uh, know about the machine and about the Trinity world, um, it's not really, really uh, necessary to um, uh, to be an uh, an steady camp pro, uh, pro steady camp. You know, at the end, uh, Trinity is a gimbal too. It's a five-axis system. You know, and mix the um, analog uh, uh, stabilize with the electronical stabilize. It's a it's a tremendous machine. So at the end, uh, it operates very different. In some point, it's some kind of similar, but at the end, it's different too uh, uh, between the steady and gimbals also. It, it, it moves completely different. So I think um, if someone have the opportunity to, to, um, uh, to learn and to start to play with Trinity, uh, you need to be focused in, in Trinity, not not especially in a, in in to be uh, to be first uh, an steady cam operator or a gimbal operator. It's completely completely different. Thanks. Thank you for Thank that. You. I, I I do agree. They they're all different technologies. The Trinity, the gimbal, and the steady cam, and you know they're all stepping stones to the to the next technology in a way. So starting somewhere is going to get you somewhere else. But it's a yeah. time. If you start with gimbals, you're going to bring skills from that into the Trinity. And if you start with a steady cam, you're going to bring skills from that into the Trinity. Because it really is, like Fala said, a hybrid system. And it has its own feel. But wherever you're starting from, you're going to be learning something that's going to help you be a Trinity operator if that's your goal. Nice. Here is Faba's reel, also cut by Merlin.
All right. Wow, that is amazing. So I do have a question from the audience that kind of relates into what you guys were talking about, the gimbals, the Steadicam and the Trinity. Is there a possible way that you could get the same shot with each? Like, can you achieve the same shot? Or is, that, is there a reason why they're all so different? Because you, you can only achieve some sort of shot with the Trinity compared to a gimbal and like that. And this question is from Faisan Faisal. Thank you for your question. All right, guys. Feel free, which one wants to go first? Me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's, um, uh, I, I had the opportunity to experiment with the three um, different uh, stabilizers. And the thing is, the, every, uh, all, all the situation is about the movement. You know, uh, gimbals, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's uh, some kind of a, um, short or small um, uh, gear to put it in a, in a very, very complex uh, circumstances. But at the end, the movement is electronical. So it feels very different. Sometimes I think that even uh, people say that you can make the, the same movement uh, with the three uh, gears. At the end, the result is gonna be completely, completely different. It, uh, I think it's, uh, it depends on uh, the mood that you can, uh, or the DOP you want to put in on the shot, you can, you can um, choose between uh, the three uh, different gears because at the end, the results really, really is gonna be completely, completely different. I think it's about uh, when you choose uh, which uh, gear you, you're gonna choose for, for your shooting, is which kind of move, which kind of feeling, you know, which, which kind of poetry you, you're gonna put in there in, in, in your shooting. Uh, sometime, sometimes, sometimes, uh, People say that, uh, for example, gimbals uh, gonna uh, destroy or, or move, move on the, the, the Steadicam uh, uh, works and it's, it's not true, obviously. And actually the, the, the Trinity is not the same that the Steadicam, it's two different circumstances. That's great, thank you so much for that. Um, so Faba, I actually had another question to add. Do you think that working with in different positions of the camera department is important or necessary in your market? Uh, um, I think the most important uh, thing is uh, be sure what do you want. You know, at the end you need to, you need to start as everyone, you know, uh, from the beginning, beginning. But uh, if you have in your mind uh, what really you want, it's just, uh, it's just a process. It just, it, it's very important to, to know um, all the departments. Hey, nice picture. Uh, all, just the, <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the departments, um, it's very important because uh, in, in, at that point you understand and you know uh, all the roles, you know, all the works. It's, uh, sometimes you don't understand maybe why uh, a second second camera do you know and and at the end if you start to understand um, all the roles that everyone uh, have on on a, on a crew you you have more value about the people that uh, help you this is this is about the team this is a crew you know you you don't work alone so you need to be really really in synchronized with uh, all the eight nine or three it depends members of the crew because everyone, every one of that guys is going to help you. So when you finally uh, start uh, as a, or you um, get uh, your position as a camera operator or Trinity or a steady cam or wherever, uh, you, you understand the value of that people that you have behind. So I think, yes, it's important to, to, to start uh, from the beginning just to, to have that in mind and um, uh, have a better uh, um, um, feeling with the, with the people and a smile. All, the, all, all that you need is a smile and love. <laughs> with that, okay. guys. Paris, is the same for you in your market? Yeah. Uh, so you were talking about different positions, correct? Yeah, do you think it's valuable in the Middle East to have learned other different camera positions before you take on the role of, a, of an operator? Yeah, of course, as, as Faba said, because the, it, will, it will let you 
understand more the hierarchy also in the uh, in the positions and uh, understand each position. Uh, I started as a as camera assistant for one year and then I moved to camera operating, and I I focused on this uh, on this line. So I moved from assistant camera camera operator, steady cam, trinity operator, and also in parallel I do cinematography. So uh, yeah, that's important as well. And how about you, Niels? Um, I know we're in the same market, but I would rather you say what you think is best, especially because you've kind of pursued Trinity more than. Sure. I <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do think like it's it's very much a, a crew operated tool. <laughs> You're not going to do anything with it by yourself that's worth much. Um, so you, you need to have the the support and the capability of, of the team around you to do that. Um, it is going to really depend on the types of projects that you're working on. But, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a whole career as, as an AC um, to, to understand the important details. But if you've never tried to, to pull focus on a one -er, you, you might want to give that a go and, and just see what they're up against and see what it takes and, and see what, you know, you, you, if you were pulling, what you might wish your operator had told you on the next one or something like that. Um, because communication between the people that are executing the shot is, is critical. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I agree with that. Thank you for that. That's great. Um, Fernando, do you have a question for Faris? Yes, I do. What are the pros and cons of operating Trinity compared to Steadicam? And would you say that Trinity will be used more in the future? Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, okay, uh, I consider the Trinity and Steadicam, they are both kind of similar, but at the same time different. Because I believe that the Trinity came up to break the limitations that we had back in the days with the regular Steadicam. Uh, if we see it in a bigger picture in terms of uh, artistically speaking, not only technically speaking, the Trinity came to allow us to tell the story in a better way, not only for operators, but also for directors and DPs. When they have the Trinity on set, they can reconsider their blocking as well. Uh, if you wanna speak a little bit on the advantages of the Trinity, as because a lot of people doesn't know uh, in details about that, because other than it allows you to go from high mode to low mode during the same shot, but also it allows us to operate in different levels. So we can go from high mode, medium mode, low mode. So that wasn't possible in a regular study camp. Also, if we take a small example that uh, we can make a regular uh, study camp shot with the Trinity, but it's not possible to make a classical Trinity jib with the study camp. So uh, yeah, also having a remote head on top of study camp uh, is a big advantage because I can I can give the remote or the DP can have the wheels and control the tilt axis and the roll axis, which is something Niels did also on the Mercedes Benz commercial and most of the time we use it also in our commercials. So I give either a camera operator or a DP the wheels or a remote so they can control the tilt. Uh, also having the horizon axis stabilized is also a big advantage because. Even if a master on the study cam who has been operating for 15 and 20 years, uh, at some point in a very tight uh, situation, maybe while going up on stairs, they might lose the horizon for a moment. So, and, and we also used to see this in the biggest shots and the biggest features. So yeah, that was the biggest advantages of the Trinity comparing to the study cam. If you wanna talk a little bit about the disadvantages, I would say, and to be very, Realistic, we can take maybe 1917 as the biggest example. Uh, and and I, I'm, I want to take the opportunity here to say hats off to Charlie Rizzi, the Trinity operator, who's also my friend. And I think he's watching us now. So uh, yeah, if, if we see 1917, uh, they had the rig especially, especially for running scenes and for tight situations where they couldn't implement the Trinity. So this is, if we want to say, it's kind of its disadvantages because it's a little bit heavy, so it's not possible to run with the Trinity. And also it's, the size of the head is quite a little bit big for tight situations. Other than that, I don't find really disadvantages with the Trinity because since I started operating it, I only find advantages in that. And I always 
it opened up my my skills, my opportunities, my abilities to make the shot, to move, to look around the corners, to cross above objects, to go inside the window of a car, as Leeds did, and I also as I did in the Skoda commercial. So yeah, th that's the biggest advantages. Thank you. Thank you very very much for that. Uh, yeah. Here's a here's a poster. That's 1917. What you're referring to, correct? Yeah, correct. So if anybody gets a chance to watch, yeah. It. And Charlie, the operator, is a very good friend of mine. I did a lot of phone calls with him to discuss, you know, like everything he went through during the pre-production and the production. And I really learned a lot from him because he's he's really a great guy, a great operator, uh, great attitude. So uh, yeah, and the outcome on 1917 was obvious, I think. Nice. Chris, uh, can you take a question from the audience for us? Yes. So I do have a question from Lena Boosby. Um, the question is, do you need a certification to operate the Trinity? And if you can explain the process, how it works in each of the countries that you, you're kind of representing, like what's it? Yeah. What's the process? Yeah, I can answer this question. Uh, you don't necessarily need a certification to operate the Trinity. No one will come and stop you if you don't have the certification. But I totally suggest that you need to make a workshop on the Trinity because it's really super technical. It's not, e it's not easy to have the Trinity and start operating it. You need the coaching. You need to make a workshop with a trainer, with a specialized trainer, uh, to learn all the technical aspects of the Trinity. Uh, also, as, as, we, as we spoke before, I, I always prefer that someone moves from steady camp to Trinity because there's a lot in common. Like there's the arm, there's the vest, uh, there's the balancing procedure. So if someone is coming from steady camp background, he will definitely be a very good Trinity operator. It's like moving from driving a regular car to rally driving. So that's, that's the concept for me. Uh, and yeah, that's the answer to the question. Uh, I want to say something about that question. Um, I think the the when you thinking about about uh, Trinity to buy a, a Trinity gear or you thinking about to introduce yourself in this kind of a uh, new world or for something to say um, you you really need to as as far as say uh, maybe the certification is not so necessary but at the end you need to go and learn uh, with the experts you know with the with these guys that make. Um, this machine possible, you know, because this is not yeah. this is not a um, a machine that you the, that you can learn by yourself. It's not a movie. It's not a uh, running. It's not this kind of uh, machine. It's very complex machine. And if you learn good with the correct people, it's gonna be better. Yeah, correct. And if if you can, if you want to contact Ari Academy, they have workshops all over the world. They conduct workshops all over the world. That's awesome. Thank you guys for that info. Uh, I've, I've participated in an ARI Academy workshop. It's just a quick search on the internet to the ARI website and they list everything there. All the stuff of their Q and A's. They got a great online series happening right now during quarantine. Yeah. Correct. Um, but yeah, you can, you can catch up on old sessions as well on the ARI Academy website, which is probably ARI.com, I'm assuming. And then you click on one of their links that takes you to the ARI Academy. All right, um, Joe, do you have a question for Neil? Uh, yes, I do. Um, let's see. Uh, did you lose it? I, I did. Um, All right. Niels, do you have an offset workout routine? Uh, I do. Yeah, you um, you have to be in in decent shape, obviously, to to run the Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, and if you know you're doing physical work and long hours outdoors, it can take a toll on you. So you should be ready for that. It should be not something that is pushing you to your limit because you'll start your your skills as an operator especially as a communicator will start to fall apart that's not good for anybody so you need to be able to handle the day um <laughs> yeah here i'm climbing uh so i like being outside and 
uh, I like focusing on uh, endurance and, and cardio, leg strength and back strength are the things that are really important, I think, for Steadicam, for operating. Um, <laughs> so climbing is, is probably more of an upper body strength thing, but I really like hiking and mountain biking are, are fantastic to, to build length strength and cardio. <laughs> I agree. Just practicing in the rig too, honestly. Right. Yeah, the more you use it, the more your body starts getting used yes. to the idea, the muscle yeah. memory idea. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, the reality is there's there's a whole lot of different things that you could do. You could just um, you know be be lifting weights or or whatever is available to you. Um, but focus on on cardio, focus on endurance, and leg strength and back strength. So just an overall active lifestyle would probably yeah. complement yeah. your career. Balance and, and coordination are really important too. Mm -hmm. um, I think footwork is a really uh, underappreciated skill in, in operating. So being able to run around a, you know uneven terrain outdoors or through a forest with all the sticks and branches and things and knowing how that feels and knowing how to move through that space safely, that's all really important. Having the right footwear. <laughs> you need some familiarity with with what the shoe is going to do for you on different kinds of terrains. So. Thank you for that, Joe. Did you find your question? Yeah, for Neil. Um, so, do you think DPS will try to make the Trinity a standard rig, um, and will a Steadicam operator need a Trinity in a similar way as the Volt or Wave? I, I do see it starting to trend that direction. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if the DPs had their way, they would have a truck with everything on it for every job. <laughs> Everybody's uh, a lot more stoked and, and happier when the Trinity's on set. But, you know, there are jobs where it's not necessarily the right tool for the shot. And there's certainly been times where I've been operating it and wishing I had something else because the space was too tight or we could have just done it on a steady cam, you know, et cetera. Or maybe it was a crane shot and they just didn't want to pay for that. So um, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be a negotiation between the producer and the DP. Um, if anything, I would actually say that it seems from my experience, the, the director has a little bit more final say on specific equipment. Uh, I tend to find that there's, there's directors who, especially in the commercial world, they just don't work without a steady cam on set or music video world especially every music video has a steady cam on set um and now that the directors are more familiarized uh with the tool it's been a couple years now there i do run into directors who say oh we're doing a commercial well we gotta have the trinity so who's available um and i noticed the same thing with the ar uh, when i was starting to get into trinity work i, I met lots of uh, especially European and UK directors who insisted on having an AR uh, because it's what they've worked with in the past and what they feel comfortable with and it's a tool they know the capabilities of. Um, so it was almost uh, hard to break through that with the Trinity because it's not an AR. Definitely. <laughs> I, I remember a lot of calls going around about that. Hey, but yeah. can, can it do this? Or can it do that? And it's like, yeah. Everybody wants it to spin. Yeah, like, the, the 360 roll shots. Yeah, are, the 360 awesome. roll. Everyone asks about it. Yeah. Everyone Can you do 360 with the Trinity? Yeah. <laughs> it's a nightmare with 360 roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you only have so much rotation you can do on the Trinity if you're going to do the 360. Yeah. So, so maybe we can tell people what are we talking about because a lot of directors and DPs, they come and ask, Can you do a full 360 with the Trinity? And the question is, Yes and no, because we can do it uh, manually, we cannot do it electronically. With the head itself, we can do uh, a full 180, so it's uh, 90 and 90 degrees with the remote control. But if we want to make a full 360 spin, we need to put the Trinity in horizontal mode. We need to lock the head itself, so it's like cheating on the system itself. And then we can, we can spin it, but it won't be precise as as in the AR, because in the AR, it's electronical as well. Yeah, yeah I, ha I have some kind of, uh, ex a couple of experience here in Mexico, because all the time the DOPs uh, ask for Trinity, because they uh, they believe that you can make 360 roll or, or roll, you know. 
and you need to explain all the time that it's not true. I mean, it's true, but this is not a, the Trinity is not for that. You know, you have the con the remote control that it uh, that is true. I shoot a, a couple of commercials with a, with some kind of a 70 degrees or 90 degrees to zero. And it works, but at the end, you need to be very, 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 um, a very good operator with your, with your gear, to understand your gear, that um, when the DOP make the roll, uh, because everything, it moves, you know, the, the head moves, moves you, you know? So at the end, it's not, it's not so simple. I mean, you can make the roll, yes. But uh, I, I really don't recommend uh, my uh, DOP's friends that you want to make that. When ask me for 360, I, I make tests to make the, as a far as say, they put the 90 degrees and lock the, lock the head. I do tests for a commercial for that. And it's, um, at the end, it's not, it's not the, it's not, the 360 roll is not in the system, you know? So it's very, very complicated. I think um, is uh, is not now when I when the DOPs ask me for for rolling or for 360, I say no because at the end I I, I fight a lot <laughs> to to put in the machine correct to to make these kind of things and normally uh, when we make the roll because I I, I did that uh, before it was nice you need to be in a in a in a in a shoot very controlled you know in the good way position of the Trinity that the role works properly because uh, they they don't they don't understand that if you go down and teal and, and you want to make the role it's not gonna work <laughs> you know it's true and and it's dangerous too trying to do that role with the Trinity because if you overcompensate you could mess up that joystick cable yeah sometimes you, you go and put down very nice the Trinity and start to to till up, you know, this kind of movement is very nice. And then you'll be say, okay, I want the roll right now. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not, the, it's, it's not, it's not like that. <laughs> it's a step-by-step -step process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Let's see, where are we at now? Sorry, I got so excited I lost my spot. Hopefully right. Trinity too, we can do the full roll. Everyone will be very happy. Right? Yeah. Chris, do you have a question for the audience? I have a question from Aline, our friend Aline. So she's a for a fellow Steadicam operator. And she's asking, I'm curious, which are the new muscles you have to train for Trinity? After spending many time operating camera and Steadicam only, how was that transition for you? And any tips that you can share with the audience? Yeah, maybe I can say it's you need to train more your brain, your brain's muscle, because operating the Trinity is like playing drums. So you need to operate with your, with your, with all, with both hands and the joystick in the left hand and also with your feet. So it's kind of complicated and you want to also control the jib. So uh, yeah, it's one level more complicated than a regular steady cam. Uh, and also operating the joystick itself is not easy. It takes a little bit of time to get used to it and to have a good muscle memory on it. Uh, but yeah, Nils, what do you think about that? I would just add that um, I found operating with a traditional steady cam, I could keep the mass much closer to me. Uh, than with the Trinity. With the Trinity, I'm I'm always operating with it a little farther away from my body. Yeah. Create the space to to transition from high low to low mode or, or whatever it be. And and if you put a steady cam on, you know that holding the rig farther away from you much increases your level of effort. So All you're right. going to spend more time in in that position with the rig farther away from you. Mm -hmm. uh, in in my experience, uh, it was very very um, new. And I start to feel a lot, of, felt a lot, of, a lot of pain on the on the legs, and in the in the back, you know. So uh, and I I had a very very nice um, advices for a very good friend, and I start to dance. 
<laughs> and I start to to follow the some kind of music to understand the the, the situation. Sometimes the DOPs want want a, a special uh, flow. These kind of things, you know. And I think that is uh, that is important, and it and it's exercise too, because at the end, dancing or jogging or boxing, you know, this kind of, when when you need to coordinate your your legs with your hands and your hips too, it's very 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 important. That sometimes maybe uh, I mean in a steady cam, uh, it's some kind of of the same. In gym belts, it's completely different, but. Um, uh, when you uh, c came in this uh, Trinity world, yes, you, ne you need to make a lot, a lot of things that maybe you did not uh, did that before, you know? So at the end, uh, it, was it was funny because um, I understood uh, also that dancing, really, it's <laughs> important. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very nice when you, you have this kind of, uh, uh, how can I say this, this kind of movement with your body, when you have this control with your body and also with the gear, as Neil say, that I'm totally agree, the the steady cam also is 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 near is near with you. It's like your baby, you know, like here, you know. But uh, but uh, Trinity, you need to put in put in up of your body, and it's uh, it's more weight and it's more complicated. And when you look into the window and make these incredible moves. You need to be very, very strong with your with, with your with your body. Maybe not with the steady cam, but with, with Trinity, you need to be a very, very strong with, in your legs, in in your back, in your hips, to to don't uh, to stay the, the shoot very uh, very straight because your hips mo moves and moves everything, you know. And also when when you calibrate the um, the, the steady cam. Trinity is completely, completely different. You know, you don't have this kind of uh, weight or this kind of uh, uh, calibration that you do in a steady car. It's different. So you, 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 um, the, the Trinity is is more free. So yes, of course, you, you need to be a little bit, I think, more strong if you operate Trinity. Yeah, more. What, what kind of dancing? What kind of dancing you're doing? Are you doing ballet? Um, no ballet, <laughs> no ballet. For me, it's more easy salsa and cumbia. So. <laughs> and and also, you know, you know, you know, uh, I a couple of months I start to uh, listen hip hop, for example, and and follow in in my home, follow follow um, the the things that I have on on the wall, listen listen hip hop of this kind of music that they have a. Uh, rhythm and try to to get into um, to to the marks with the rhythm of the music because at the end and I think Faris and Niels know this commercials and music videos and all these kind of things is not is not gonna be the same rhythm all the time uh, the DOP gonna um, gonna ask you to go slow or that you need to understand to the expressions of the actress like, as Christian, the expression of the situation, you know? And maybe uh, if you understand that before that you uh, getting into this uh, superhero suit, you know, Trinity, uh, it's gonna be more easy. In my path in, in, the, Trinity, in the Trinity world, I think sometimes, uh, um, the first the, the first time that I start to operate, uh, I I didn't know this, you know, and it was like a, some kind of a robot, you know, and then uh, I understood that um, it's about feeling too, it's about rhythm. So that uh, put you on on a gym or or in a yeah sure. So you, you have to be more dynamic, like dance with the camera, feel the rhythm, okay. listen to the music, feel the actress also, and like and. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. It's your dance partner, the ring. Yeah. <laughs> You're like permanent dance partners attached to your body. And then you got to go get a third dance partner, which is the one that you're actually framing up. So it's like a three, three dance thing going. You wearing the rig and then framing up the person that's dancing in front of your rig. Yeah, it's a lot to take in, right? <laughs> All right, um, Joe, do you have a question for Forrest?
He's figuring out the mute. Don't, don't tell me you also lost it. <laughs> no, I'm here. All right. Oh, Forrest. Let's see here. Let's go with my questions. All right. So if you were a day player on a new show, would you mm -hmm. recommend using the Trinity, knowing that, that it takes longer to set up? Or will you just, if you're just, uh, if you have the ability, I mean, if you have both rigs, just the, the Trinity and a regular steady cam, would okay. you start your new show with your regular steady cam versus the Trinity? Sure. Uh, okay, I'm going to divide your question into two parts. I'm going to answer first if I uh, suggest the Trinity, and the second part is going to be about uh, if it takes longer time to set up. Right. So, uh, yeah, of course, I'm going to suggest the Trinity because the Trinity is a versatile tool that allows us to make a lot more shots and it opens up more opportunities for the operator and for the director and DPs. Uh, for instance, if we saw in the BMW commercial, uh, so yeah, this is a big example, like I'm doing a full jib up. So we're using the Trinity as a small jib arm. And also in the BMW commercial, uh, at some point, uh, the actor is go, uh, was crying if, and he remembers his brother. So the director said, okay, let's have, uh, let's have him sitting down. He was standing and come on, let's, let's have him sitting down because he would cry. So we did a full jib up with him. So yeah, that's a new opportunity. Uh, also on the Skoda commercial, I suggested to start on the radio. We saw this idea from Niels and uh, the director wanted me to open the, 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 the door of the car and start from inside. And when I, jip, when I move out, they will close the door. And I said, okay, let's do it from inside the window. And I showed them the reference of Niels. That they did it in LA on the Mercedes band. And also on the Skoda, because the Skoda window was too tight and the commercial was live on air, so it wasn't easy. We did 120 rehearsals, and during that 120 rehearsals, I only hit the window one time. So yeah, it wasn't easy, but it was so risky. Uh, and answering the second part of the question, which is, it takes longer to set up. Uh, this is a dilemma, by the way. I don't believe it takes time to set up more than regular steady cam. Uh, and it depends on the situation as well, because in some situations, if you have a special unit for the, for the Trinity, you won't face this problem. And also, if we're using, I always make sure to do gear checks ahead of time. I insist on doing gear checks for every shoot on the Trinity, because I always find the way, the best way, the fastest way to move from Trinity to studio mode or to handheld mode or whatever. Uh, because if you're using the right brackets, if you're using the right tools, everything, let's say if you have all the plates from Ari, the same plates, uh, so you can go from Trinity to studio mode because also in regular study cam, we, we remove the viewfinder. And if we do the math uh, that during the day of how much time, and I don't know if Niels and Faba agrees with me, back in regular study cam, when you wanna go from low mode to high mode, we always need to adjust the monitor, adjust the gimbal and rebalance. It takes like at least 30 seconds to one minute. So if we do the math of all that calculations during the whole day, uh, I think it's going to be the same as uh, doing the setup of the Trinity at the beginning of the day. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I, I think once you get the right parts, it's, it's really the same. And uh, I've worked with lots of ACs who are working with it the first time and they're um, you know, setting expectations of the DB ahead of time. Well, it's going to take a lot of time to transition. And I tell them, no, we have the right parts. We've prepared for this and, and they're in disbelief. So it's, it's almost the yeah. same. You say yeah, I was, I was literally in situations where we moved from Trinity to other modes in less than one minute because yeah. we did, we did tests for that. We were ready for that. So yeah, it takes just remove the camera, put another plate, put the screws, and then we're ready to shoot. And, and I, I would say it's worth it waiting a couple of minutes if you have all of that advantages with you. It's worth waiting. <laughs> nice. That, that, that is a good way to put it. It definitely is worth waiting. And, you know, I mean, a lot of things in the filmmaking business are worth waiting for, actually. But it, it's right. If you got that extra 20, 30, 40 minutes, however long it takes for you to build your kit with that camera set up that day, you know, it could probably make things a lot easier for the rest of the day. Yeah. You know, you set the, you set the tone right when you get right. out of the car. <laughs> um, Fernando, do you have a question for Faba? 
Unmute. Yes, yes, I, I, I did, but I think all of them already answered it. It was about the, the role and how was the, the transition from gimbals to, to Trinity that I think that question has already been answered, but. Well, I mean, you guys were more talking about the role itself. Yeah, well, it, it, is, it is a subject that I think if I can address it, but I don't know if, 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 it's, if, it, if it, was, it was already answered. Uh, I think I, I'm going to say something about it. Uh, I think as uh, Faris or Neil that it came for the, for the Steadicam uh, world, and it was the, the first uh, um, gear to stabilize in that way the camera, and then came the, 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 the gimbals, you know. And at the end, uh, two, like three years ago, I discovered the Trinity, and it's a mix uh, about the, the two. So at the end, uh, the most uh, incredible about this machine, it's the most uh, um, circumstances that happen with the gimbals is the DOP say to you like, yeah, but the, the, the sometimes don't like the electronical mood, you know, because at the end it's electronic and it's not the same. So a lot of DOP say to you like, yeah, but uh, I need the, I want this, this, um, uh, this move that obviously the Steadicam have, and they invented the best, you know, the Easy Rigs and these kind of things to try to imitate this nice move that the Steadicam have. That's why Trinity is unbelievable. That's, that's why Trinity is uh, in another level, because at the end, you have that move, you have this kind of feeling, you know, it's uh, analog uh, stabiliz uh, stabilization, you know. With a with a with a gimbal, that means that you can control with a joystick, uh, as uh, other gimbals, the the movement, uh, the tilt or pan and roll of, of the camera. So that's that that's guys, Ari guys, um, make an incredible machine, and I think uh, is is some kind of a, yes, is is the future, because uh, for the moment you don't have a other rig more bigger than this. You know, and um, sometimes maybe it's uh, it's heavier and it's uh, have a, this head is 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 more. If you are a classic aesthetic cam, uh, the the all the setup is more bigger and more and more complicated. But at the end, uh, it's an evolution. It's an evolution of the two worlds. You know, the gimbals and and aesthetic cam. That's why uh, I was very interesting when I knew the when I met the, the Trinity. Because I saw that this is the future. It's, it's, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be another machine like this, you know. So I start to change my my uh, my perception about uh, what I want to do on the on the next years. That's why I uh, went to New York and then Los Angeles to take the take the um, the workshops and the certification with Ari with Alan Lennox and the incredible guys. Um, Santiago also yes and all the um, um, Ari crew in the United States in Canada these guys was uh, unbelievable teachers to uh, to um, to make me understand why is uh, if, if, I, if I'm a, a camera operator or a stabilized, a stabilized operator why this machine is important and why I decide to, to buy it and start to work work on it because at the end, uh, also is is a is the best accessory that you're gonna have for for a Steadicam. You know, exist other kind of accessories, but at the end, this is a remote head that you're gonna control by yourself. You know, uh, and also you have the 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 option that the DOP with wheels, as uh, Niels and Faris uh, said before, uh, with the PLs. PLS wheels, I guess, uh, you can control also the Trinity as a remote head, like a, as a Jeep, and uh, with the control. So you have all all the all the options. Is uh, for the for the moment you don't you don't have more options in control with your body as a, as a state cam operator. Is uh, the Trinity is the more biggest. So that's 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 why I, I like. And as far as say, uh, if I need to decide which mas which ma machine I want to use in a complex or, or um, a project, in a complex project, of course, Trinity is the option for time, for options to, to go uh, 
into the um, into the into the people or into the stops tables uh, windows uh, perspective uh, everything uh, i'm happy to have one <laughs> thank you thank you for your answer chris do you have an, a question from the audience? i do have a question and if you guys don't feel comfortable answering it you can skip yourself but this would be a very interesting thing to know especially because you all come from a very different market claudio bautista is asking for all of you, if you could talk about the day rates of being a Trinity operator, as we know, like you usually charge for your kid and everything. So if you can just shine the light on, on some of the people that are pursuing this career, that would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, sure. I, I can send him my bank account, bank statement if you want. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I normally charge 2,500 US dollar uh, for me, including the Trinity, including the equipment, I work for 12 hours straight ahead. And then after 12 hours on the, on the hour number 13, I charge 25% extra. And then on the uh, for hour 14, I charge another 25%. So for the last extra two hours, it's 50% extra. And I stop at 14. So that's my aim. I want to stop at 14 because if I have two productions, I have another day of shoot. I prefer to stop at 14 and give the same level of uh, efficiency for both productions. So yeah, that's the rate and that's the, the working hours. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I have, I have my own regulations if you want. <laughs> I did that for me because I, I know how much tiring is the Trinity. And uh, yeah, that's my rate, that's my, that's my working hours. Well, it's, it's definitely not a cheap investment you know, Trinity, yeah. it's, it's the price of a house, you know, yeah, in certain is. places around the world. Yeah, so and if you look it, behind me, my house, I got it because of the Trinity. Right, <laughs> right. You kind of have to switch, you have to switch your priorities. Yeah. You have to, you have to invest in equipment that's going to get you work, which then the work gets you the home and the stability and hopefully the family and all Correct. the happy ending stuff that we all fight for. So, oh, all right, um, next question is gonna be from Joseph to Faris. Joe, do you got your questions ready? Yeah, I do. Sweet. Right, so this one's like, this one's kind of personal for me. Um, do you have any tips about networking and starting new relationships with people that you wanna work with in the future? Okay, so now you know how much I charge and you wanna also know how much I get, how I get my jobs also. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. I give you all my tricks and tips. Okay, now at the end of the day, I think everyone has, is, has his own way in networking and touch basing with, with people. But uh, I would say never miss an opportunity to be always there. Knock doors. Oh, that's, that's me and Niels back in LA. <laughs> yeah, we were doing like, we were sharing experiences. So it was a nice, nice, nice day. Yeah, so back to the question about networking and touch raising with people. So uh, never miss any opportunity, in my opinion. Attend exhibitions, attend online seminars, as you, Joseph, is, do is doing now. You're on the right uh, path, I think, because one day you get the opportunity and you never know from whom you will get it or how you will get it. So always be there, be available, uh, knock the doors of people, even if you don't consider they are the key people for you, but also they might be they might help you or they might put you in contact with someone else. Uh, also nowadays, it's way easier for us to reach people through social media because like if you have the Instagram account, you can be active on your Instagram account, your Facebook, you can make your own website, create your reel. Uh, I started my reel when I, it was very, very young reel. So I, I had only a few shots. I did a small edit. I sent it to DPs, to directors. Hi guys, I'm here. I have this equipment. So bring me in. Uh, I, I'm ready to do any small jobs and this is how I grew up you know like uh, you get phone calls if, even if there is already very experienced operators in the market before you but at some point at some day they won't be available so they will bring you in but you have to be ready for that you have to be ready for all the situations so that when the opportunity knocks the door you'd be ready for that and I also did something during my career past is that I created opportunities for me I created chances, but when those chances and opportunities came, I was ready for that. 
That'll be that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very nice way to put that, Faris. It's mm -hmm. being ready. Um, yeah. I've been given opportunities before I was ready, and I wish I could relive those opportunities. I wish I could go yeah. back in time and be more prepared. But yeah. who knows how that's yeah. exactly supposed to go other than do your research, do your homework, and invest as much as you can into the career path you choose. Yeah, and especially now in this period, I was so ready for everything. I was ready to move, and then COVID-19 knocked the door. <laughs> it ruined everything. So you had, you had, I had a lot of plans. I was going to move from Beirut to another country. I was preparing all the papers. I had all my connections, and like COVID-19 stopped everything. For the last six months, we've been freezing. Wow. Uh well, I'm glad you're doing okay, and thank you so much for joining yeah. us on this sure, uh, Saturday. And um, it's at nighttime, right? It's almost midnight sure. or something where you're yeah, at. Yeah, it's 11 p.m. now. It's dark. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for staying up late with us, Faris. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, Fernando, do you have a question for Faba? Yeah, I, I already asked him. I asked him the, the question about the role. Yeah, there's another question at the, on the outline. I can ask it for you. Okay. Faba, do you think social media is an important marketing tool? And if so, why? I think, I think it's very, very important. I did not understand that before. Um, I, my, my philosophy here in, in Mexico, in this market, is the, the work talks about you. So I, the, I start this, uh, uh, all of these years, I, I did not make a lot of social media because uh, I just focus on, on the work and I just focus on the DOPs uh, be happy with your, with your work, with, your, with all, all your circumstances that you offer to, to them. But uh, since I started in this of the uh, Trinity, uh, I understood that uh, it's, a, it's a world outside, <laughs> you know, so it's very nice uh, now to, to put myself more um, interest uh, about to know uh, people from all the all parts of the world that have the same ambition and the same uh, um, uh, equipment or gear and ideas uh, that I have. Now I have the opportunity to be uh, talking with Faris and Niels that I really, really am impressed in of the, 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 the work of these uh, incredible operators. And, um, and years, years before, I, di I didn't know this. I, I, I did not put myself, I don't put a lot of attention about it. So now I'm changing, I'm, I'm some kind of shame <laughs> to put myself on the internet. But uh, it's true. I mean, it's, it's part of the evolution, and so we need to we need to know each other. We need to know what uh, what are we doing in 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 the, in in the shootings in the world, you know? Because at the end, uh, it's nice to 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 have the opportunity to ask, for example, someone to Faris that it wor it works. Uh, the job is in the other side of the world, you know. But they probably have a the same question or the same uh, problem, you know? And it's nice to, to have the opportunity to resolve or just to share uh, uh, circumstances because at the end, uh, we, we work in, in the same. Everyone have the, uh, his, uh, their lives and everyone have the, his uh, circumstances in, in, in his jobs. But at the end, we have something in common that it's uh, that we are, uh, in the same job and we make some kind of the same uh, uh, shoots or these kind of things. So at the end, I'm happy and of course, social media is very, very important. Now I understand that and, and it's uh, 20, 20, 2021. So of course, it's important, yes. And, and Niels and Faris, you guys agree? Social media plays a part in the marketing? Yeah. And uh, that's the biggest example is us tonight. We all got connected through the social media. Otherwise, maybe it was going to be way harder to reach each other. And yeah, we're like on the other side of the world, 10 hours behind. 
Uh, and as Faba said, it's very common. Like it's common sense. The film industry is really common. We face the same problems. Uh, we have the same issues. Uh, and yeah, and I believe that social media helped me a lot in reaching more new people, reaching out DPs, reaching out directors, especially when you show up or or when you do a shoot that goes viral all over the world. Because three of my commercials that I did, and especially when you make those split screen, it it really goes viral and the all biggest pages in, uh, on social media, like Learn Filmmaking, they share it. And this is how you can have more network, you can reach more people as well. Yeah, one of the best pieces of advice that I got for networking, especially in the film industry, is you always hear it's about who you know, but it's really about who knows you. And uh, Instagram is, is just a really great tool to share what you can do with the world to people you don't, wouldn't know otherwise. I agree for sure. Um, social media has done a lot and it's brought a lot of us together. I've, I've met all of most of you through social media. Um, I actually knew Chris and Niels before Instagram was a thing. <laughs> and then I, I think I met Joe on set after he had followed me on social media and I met Fernando in a class after he had followed me on social media. I met Faris at Cinegear yeah. Expo. You know, and we followed each other on social media. And then Faba actually flew in town and, and took a study class from me. And him and I became friends, which yeah. led to him and Fernando being connected. Yeah, that's crazy because I, I live in Mexico and he lives in Mexico. And we, we didn't met in it, like in the whole year that I've been working here. And we met because you introduced us. So, yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Faba has his hands full over there in Mexico City. You know, he's in demand. People want to work with him. He's a good guy and he's good at his job. Question, th the thing is, is that there's only one of Faba. So it's like finding someone that has the same passion, the same drive, the same, you know, focus, but also is in the same location and wants to do similar. It was, it was, it was, it was telling me that I had to connect these two guys together. It was Thank you. the world talking to me at Thank that you. moment. Thank you. <laughs> but it's also the world talking to me right now. Like, I felt we needed a Trinity session just to hear your guys' stories. I mean, 1917 was so awesome that people know exactly what the Trinity is now. Yeah, thank you, you know, Charlie. took them. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you, Charlie. Really, really. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. He is watching us, by the way. Uh, well, yeah, thank you for Charlie. joining us. Hi, yeah. Charlie. Yeah, so uh, because because Roger, Mr. Roger as well, Deacons and Charlie and Peter also, they knew how and where to use the Trinity and like, because they, they proved 100% the ability of the Trinity. And also it helped us as operator to show up to directors and the piece who tells them, okay guys, did you watch 1917? Look what they did in 1917. Because before 1917 era, we used to put much effort to explain about the Trinity. But now, like, okay, the, everyone watched 1917. It's way easier for us to implement the Trinity in the shoes with the production. And it is a production value as well. I consider it as a production value. Totally agree. When you have a DOP that have in mind something very clear and knows um, what really want to do, it's very, very easy because at the end, if you know, all the expansion that have the machine, you have a very, very good uh, result. Niels, did you have something? Uh, just, I would add, it, put, it, it adds cachet to the tool. Everyone's heard of the tool now. For, for a while, it was like some people didn't even know it existed or what it, would, what it could do, and it just put it on the map, so. I, I, I like the benefit that this tool adds to the department the fact that as an operator you don't have to worry about as much as keeping horizon level which you should always worry about that but there's like a whole laundry list of things that are going through your heads as you're operating yeah and so if if the horizon can be corrected and say like roger deacons in 1917 is on wheels so framing's corrected as well you really have to go through the bulk of the shot physically yeah so it, it's helpful, but it's also, it takes away some of that control. Yeah. And also, as you know, Ari developed a special system for the 1917, which is a long range wireless because uh, Roger was operating the wheels, the tilt wheels. 
and the operators were because they had to be hidden somewhere else and the operator were far away from the village so uh, yeah they developed a special wireless system for that which also we, we might benefit from it at a later stage and some point well that would be great to see some upgrades yeah. Uh, Niels, uh, do you ever suggest shots when you're operating, when you're not DP, or is it mostly they come in with a plan? Um, that that is, you know, sort of the essence of your job in a lot of ways. Uh, so yeah, I, I do suggest shots um, at different times for different reasons, and and not always. Uh, most people are coming in with uh, some kind of straightforward plan. Um, some DPs and directors are going to be very, very specific about what that is, and, and you can kind of follow along. Um, and other people are going to rely on you to some extent, especially when things start to get hectic on set, if we're not doing rehearsals anymore for time's sake or something, you know, there's going to be more opportunities for you to um, maybe make your own decision uh, on some detail of the shot that wasn't filled in for you by, by them. And they're really relying on you to have good instincts and to follow the style that's been established to achieve that. Um, other people are, are planning to have no plan, and, and that's the plan, uh, which is great sometimes. Sometimes that generates really good results. Um, and I, the most difficult thing is when somebody's got, you know, especially we're talking about this with the 360 role, um, if that wasn't brought up ahead of time, you know, uh, sometimes you're in a situation where the DP or the director think the tool can do something that it really can't, or we're putting it in a situation that it's, it's not going to shine in. And that can be very disappointing for everybody. And, and a really important skill is to be able to keep that um, positive and creative and, and find alternatives to what they had envisioned that are still going to make everybody happy, but are achievable. Sometimes the shots are just too complicated. <laughs> I remember one shot, they, they wanted me to, to go down this huge line of people waiting, like a comically long, long line of people waiting to go into the bank. So I start, you know, a block away from the door, rush down this line of people, up the stairs, and then the door's very narrow and at a weird angle, and then flying down a, a line of people to the teller. And the amount of time we had in the edit for this was, was like five seconds or six seconds, maybe. And, and even running it without the rig on, I could only do the run in eight seconds. So there was just, just no way to make it happen. I just wasn't fast enough to do that shot. So we had to kind of rearrange the way it was framed and presented to make it tight. Have you ever showed up to set? And said, and literally, the conclusion is it's impossible. I try, I try really hard. I mean, yes, in in my own head, maybe yes. I just show up and go, oh, this is not going to happen. But immediately, you, you have to be thinking about what are the alternatives? What are we, you know, what is trying to be achieved creatively with the shot that they had envisioned, and what resources do we have around us that can do something similar to that that's going to feel good. So I try not to come in with, oh, you guys, this is impossible. You know, you, you have to always be saying yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, but that will be very yes, but helpful. We can see how it goes. Maybe this is an alternative, you know. So it, it, sometimes you have to show people that it's not going to work, and then they get to be the one to, to release their idea. And, and that's a, a, a softer way to go about it. Yes, yes. That's exactly why I asked you. I was like, hey, was there ever that moment? Because I would imagine you would politically try to soften that as much as possible. Yeah, you don't ever want to tell someone, hey, your idea is, is not going to work, or it's bad, or it's impossible, or can't, I can't do it, or, you know. Yeah, and, yes. and this, happens, this happens a lot, especially when we work with the directors who are, in my opinion, visual directors, or directors coming not from a technical background, or sometimes we work with kind of DPs who are also visual and not technical DPs. So it takes you times two effort to explain them that this is not possible, but also in a very political way as yeah. well. Yeah, I, for everybody involved, I mean, we're all working in a visual medium and sometimes showing visually what works and doesn't work is the quickest way to communicate. That's why we're using film. Yeah, that's why I think if you have the best communication with the DOP and the DOP knows what about the, the machine, 
it's gonna be nice. If it's not, it's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> you know, uh, a, a couple of months ago, uh, we shoot a, a, um, a sequence of a movie, you know, and the DOP said to me days before, like, hey, we have this window and then I want to roll, you know, and go, go back and then go, go to the characters. Okay, very nice. I think it's possible because I only think that the role is going to work per, uh, properly in a, in a, in a vertical post and the 90 degrees, you know, here. But at the end, when we, when, when we, when we uh, get into the, to the location, the window, it was not in front of us, it was up, you know. So at the end, I say to the, to the OB, this is not a matrix head, bro. You know, <laughs> it's not going to work. I can't go, go uh, you know, till down and, and moving on the roll. And it's, uh, at the end, Fernando and I, Fernando was uh, an assistant of me. We sweat a lot, you know, sweat blood to, as you knew, to put solutions on the table, try to, you know, to resolve the problem, you know. But at the end, um, we make a movement and, and uh, after 15 shots, we make something <laughs> that the DOP was some kind of happy. But uh, yes, it's very important uh, in these months, for example, to me, to talk with the DOPs and really uh, um, let uh, them understand that the, the dimension of the machines, because they, they imagine th some things or some, uh, some shots that maybe it's not gonna be possible. Yeah. I would say one other thing that's a really important thing to being a good operator is there's often this moment, especially nowadays, where everybody's watching the playback of the take and it's starting to get good and, and we're seeing, is, is it time to move on or not? And you should always be thinking, how can the shot be better than it is? It's, you know, is it 90% of the way there? What are, where are the moments in the shot where I feel, I feel something I'm not even sure maybe what to put my finger on, but it's like not quite as good as it could be. And you, you should feel that and listen to that and try to explore what it is. And, and maybe it's just, you need to tighten up the push into someone just a little bit or, you know, change, change some minor detail. So, uh, you know, often the DP and the director will be there also thinking, you know, this is very, very good, but there's something not quite right about it yet. It's almost like cooking food, you know, and it's like, maybe it needs a little salt. Oh yeah, good idea. And then we'll go do that. So. Yeah, actually, those minor things could solve so much time very quickly because you're probably thinking, it, or at least other people are thinking it's a bigger issue. And here it's, you know, just this tiny little thing. Yeah. Solutions, always having solutions. That's what makes, I think, a good operator for sure in, in any platform. Is, yeah, even it could it would, be a static shot, you know, and it could be a note about someone's timing for their entrance or what have you. So. Just be ready to solve quickly and efficiently yeah and respect, and respectfully and sometimes the trinity it probably is not the solution probably the, the 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 solution for that shot is just the steady cam you know so maybe the, the 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 trinity is more bigger so at the end if you are in a in a in a small places in a smaller rooms or in this kind of um, living rooms or houses that is small Maybe you don't need the, the Trinity is, is an accessory, you know, at the end of the base of everything is the steady cam, you know. So uh, sometimes here, uh, also in commercial, because it's, it's new and it's uh, some kind of innovation, they want to use Trinity for everything. And it's okay, thank you for giving me a job, but <laughs> sometimes it's just, uh, it's, it's just uh, a steady cam movement. Uh, a steady cam, uh, you can also, uh, go down, go up, till uh, make a lot of things too. The, and it's sometimes it's, it's going to be more comfortable. It depends as, as an operator, the thing and the more important thing, as I just say, say is that you, you have options. If you, if you have options, you, you're going to be more uh, happy and comfortable in the shoot because you're going to have the option to say to the DOP, okay, we, we can do this, we can do that. And, and we're gonna resolve the problem. Thank you very much for that. Um, real quick, what do you guys uh, think about the guys that fly Trinity all the time? I know there's a few guys, I, I follow some of them. They just don't do Steadicam anymore. It's Trinity all the time, every job. 
Well, it's my favorite thing to put the camera on. It's it's like a magic wand, so <laughs> I can understand that. It's just easier sometimes to just yeah. go straight to Trinity Moan if your body can take it. So I've noticed that these yeah. people that fly Trinity all the time are in good shape, like muscles are, you know, really good conditioning. Yeah, yeah since, since I got the Trinity in 2017, I did almost only five jobs on the regular study cam. Uh, and I'm almost fully booked, let's say. So I almost did only five jobs on the study cam. And it was for technical reasons because I couldn't flew my Trinity with me. It was a last minute, we couldn't do the custom thing. So I had to make regular study cam shoots. But normally I always try to implement the Trinity because I am sure it's way easier for everyone. And it has production value and it's going to be faster. Uh, we can tell the story in a better way. We can, uh, yeah. Uh, here, here in this market in my beautiful Mexico, everyone is uninvited in my home. If you got the time to come here, is it is depends if, if the production is gonna pay it or not, you know. Yes. <laughs> so, so sometimes uh, they 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 call you for a regular steady cam because they have that kind of budget, you know, and. Um, and uh, we are in this situation now in Mexico that we want to regulate uh, our situation as a, a camera operators and even in general, the, all, the, all the departments, you know, because we are a big market, but we are a fucking disaster, you know, and yeah. this kind of leads to, to the budget, the hours, you know. So at the end, we are in this... Uh, uh, in this moment that the producers and everyone in the in the in the page of the crew start to organize uh, not only the DOPs, the DOPs are very very big, have a very nice association, but uh, all of us, the the people, the, the third level of the, titan, the, the Titanic, you know, us, uh, we start we start to we start to organize each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The boat is is going down, and we are we are there, you know. Yeah, you're the so violin you... guy standing at the end. <laughs> oh, I no, thought he was Leo. We are <laughs> we are down like yeah, we need to go out, you know. So we we, we start to organize each other, and we need to ask about more um, more fair the. The, the hours and yeah i and totally the, understand what you're saying Fabo, because i've been through that through that because i believe at the end you as an individual will you will put your own rules your own regulations and the productions they will ask for you even if you're at the uh, other end of the world so they want you they want your work they want your skills they want your experience they will bring you so at this stage you will be able to put your own rules and your own regulations so yeah, keep fighting because I know it's not easy in such situation where there's the union is not really dominating. Yeah. Uh, I've been through that, but I created my own union, my own rules, my own everything. So yeah, keep it up. T totally agree. I mean, uh, uh, that's why I'm I'm start with the uh, when I'm saying to you about the social media that the, I'm saying that I I start to understand that the the work uh, speak, you know. Because at the end, if you do um, a good job and you have a very nice vibe and good feeling, of course the DOP is gonna fight for you, you know. And uh, and the um, the production companies or the producers uh, is gonna pay because at the end, if the DOP say I need this guy, it's gonna be like that, you know. But at the end, uh, here in Mexico. Uh, we need to organize better each other because at the end, uh, as I said uh, at the first time, we are we are a team. You know, exist the assistants, the the seconds, the the data managers, these kind of guys, also the camera assistants, and uh, it's a big it's a big opportunity to to us to ask for better and fair circumstances. I think we're gonna get it more more than before. And that's why Trinity, you can you can use Trinity all the time because at the end you need to fight for the budget and you need to uh, say to the production, hey, Trinity cost this. This is the budget for Trinity. This is the budget for for the Steadicam. Uh, thank God here in here in Mexico, a lot of DOPs ask for Trinity because it's it's really it's a nice uh, uh, machine also for commercial because they don't have time that you change. Uh, 
even well i mean if you are a, a, a very nice camera operator you're not gonna have any problems in two minutes you're gonna change to low mode to normal to normal mode but the difference is the all the perspective new perspective that you can you can have with trinity so this is the circumstance here me <laughs> thank you fava we appreciate your guys's input chris do you have some questions prepared from the audience for us yes yeah, so i have one this is not related to trinity but this is a question from amir cooper for fires and meals how do you get into underwater filming well I would I, underwater first um you need to be scuba certified so uh, you should be very comfortable with the scuba gear and with being in lots of different situations underwater and communicating underwater uh, before you add cameras to that. Yeah, correct. It's the same for me. I started uh, doing scuba diving way before uh, I, I, uh, I started my career as a camera operator. Uh, I started as a, I did my open water, advanced deep rescue, uh, and now I became certified as a dive master. It is a hobby. It is not the main career. My, it's a main hobby to be an underwater uh, scuba diver, but I implemented my scuba diving hobby in the industry because uh, to have underwater cinematographers or underwater camera operators, it's very rare, I think, worldwide. So uh, yeah, in the region, we're like only three or four. And there's also a lot of people specialized in this. I'm not specialized in this, but I, if I'm on a commercial of, um, or if I'm, or if I'm on a shoot and they require underwater. So I say, guys, okay, I can do it. And I, I did one shoot feature film underwater and three commercials underwater. So yeah, it's a nice experience because uh, we know how to operate. We know the camera operating. So I did only one class, which, uh, which is like the dimensions underwater, the lenses and all of that. And yeah, I'm ready to do any underwater jobs. It's nice, Thank lovely. Thank you for that. Fernando, yeah. do you have a question that you want to share from the audience? Yeah, yeah, this is like a really general question and, and it's been asked like really often for people that is not in the film industry and it's a really, like a really general question. Can a person likely be a, uh, a successful camera operator or DP without having a higher level education? This is from Leon Martinez. So I would say when you when you say higher level education, um, I, I guess probably they're referring to like a form film. program that costs a lot of money. And, um, you know, I would say there's so many ways to get educated these days with the Internet and with technology being what it is and our ability to connect. You know, you're here today getting some education. Um, so the important thing is to identify the skills that are going to be important to you being successful at that endeavor. And a great way to do that is, is by listening to us talk about what those are. <laughs> so you're, you're getting it right already. Um, but, you know, you can develop all the skills that are required without a formal higher education, without an expensive education. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that. It does help yeah. a lot of people. Oh, sorry. It's very valuable. What did you yeah, say, Leo? Uh, doing a program like that, uh, I did a program like that, and and to me the the biggest advantage of that was how quickly you meet lots and lots of people who are doing the same thing that you do, and so you graduate out of it with a pre-built network for yourself. So that's yeah. not to be um, discounted, but you can use social media to replace that. So. You had something first, first. Yeah, I was saying as a big example, a lot of the biggest film directors in the world they haven't been into film schools, so. Uh, uh, and yeah, but I always say attend exhibitions, do workshops. Uh, and as Neil said, this is, uh, this is a workshop. This is uh, an online institution, study school. You can learn a lot at study school. So I think, and this is where study school came because maybe for people who didn't have the chance to attend universities or big film programs, they can go to such schools like study school. They can make workshops there. It's all about operating and teamwork and things like that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to send you the invoice, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll send you mine back. <laughs> OK. <laughs> we'll see which one's bigger. Yeah, I owe you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, I know uh, you do. <laughs> of course. Chris or Fernando, you guys have some more? 
Uh, Joe, do you have one that you want to share from the audience? Let's see. Uh, you have to get back to me on that. Uh, okay. Um, I have one from uh, Gavin Remy. Have you ever gotten injured while operating? And like, what, what steps do you take after that? Like, if that happens on set, like, what happens, you know? Well, maybe I can answer. Uh, yeah, safety comes first. Safety for Sarah, so safety comes first. And we as operators, we always in situations where we're in really in, the, in danger because we are on cranes, we are, as you saw the commercial I did for Karim, the car commercial, I was sitting on the top of the car and we were on the low loader. So that, was, that wasn't easy, it was risky. But we make sure to take all the safety and precautions. And if in any case you feel that what you're doing is not safe, you can re refuse to do it. Just say, I can't do it. I don't feel okay. I don't feel safe. Just refuse it. it the, the shot is never worth your health or, your, or you, yourself. Yeah, that's absolutely right to remember that at the end of the day, especially as the operator where you're on kind of the sharp end of it, you're always close to the action, et cetera. Um, it's really, it comes down to you. It's up to you. You make your own choice and you should, should really not feel pressured by the environment or the producers or your paycheck or yourself to uh, do something that you don't feel comfortable with. And, and that's more true now than ever with the pandemic. You know, if you're being asked, I'm turning jobs down every day who are trying to do things that I don't think are safe right now. So. Yeah. And I will say this with a grain of salt, more than likely when you stand up for yourself and you choose not to do the shot because it is unsafe, you might lose that contact. If, if, if they really truly care, they'll they'll stand beside you and and speak up with you. But I've I've voiced several times in the past of unsafe steady cam shots, and I've lost those contacts because I was difficult to deal with when they put me in an unsafe position. So just know that that comes with that territory too. But you shouldn't you shouldn't agree to do the job anyways because you're fearful of not having a job again when your safety is on the line because you're probably going to want your back or your legs over the job because that's the first thing that's going to happen if you do get injured something's going to snap and then it's going to prevent you from future jobs anyway so there is that risk that comes in there but you have to understand that your safety is more important than a future job with that person that does not care about your safety so just yeah, sorry. Just figure out if the people who do care about the condition that you're in, who understand that you have to be in, in a good condition to do good work. <laughs> Sadly, you don't know those people yeah, until you've everybody. been in those positions. Yeah. No, and sometimes you need to understand that say no, it's better than say yes and crash and destroy everything. <laughs> you know, sometimes the production guys or uh, the situa the shooting situation is it's not really clear that everything is going to be fine. You know, I've been in a couple of accidents, not myself, not, not my, uh, my, my gears, but uh, sometimes it happens and no one have the, uh, the guilt, you know? So, uh, so you need to think very well what, um, what you're going to, what is the risk, what, what you're going to resolve that. And sometimes uh, if you say no, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's not. It's, it's gonna be worse if you say yes and something some, something happens. One thing that's important, I think, uh, especially with a steady cam, is you know there's often a lot of pressure to just go for it, especially if you're losing the light or whatever it may be. And sometimes, you know, often <laughs> people are gonna try and skip the rehearsal, which is okay to a certain extent, but you know, at a minimum, I would say scout the path that you think the shot is gonna take. It doesn't necessarily take as long as running a whole rehearsal, but if you go and there's some debris or whatever in the way, you can clear that and that might save your career, so. That's very good advice. Thank, thank you. you, thank you for that. Fernando, do you have another question from the audience? Yes, this is a really technical question for Faris and Niels. And it's about, um, uh, can you talk a little bit about the camera blocking uh, you did for the beer commercial uh, starting outside of the train? 
and the music video job in Vegas going across the car. This is one wish. Yeah. What kind of support you got from the grips to get smooth transitions and preserve the feeling of a continuous shot? This is a question for, from Fernando Reyes, AMC cinematographer, Atlanta based. Sure. Hi, Fernando, and thank you for watching us and thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, if you want to talk about the beer commercial I did in Thailand, it was uh, the idea behind the shot was to have the camera starting from outside the train, the train and then to go inside the train. So uh, we did the rehearsal, we did the test one day, be one day before because we wanted to see the size of the window and how the Trinity will be able to go inside the window and uh, in, this, in the same continuous shot and same feeling. And this is where the input of the operator comes and the feeling of the operator because you'll be able to, to do the same shot in the beginning and then when you have, of course, we have on set the overlap mixer because you can do the overlapping uh, and see where the last shot ended and then you can move to the inside shot. So also we did that chronologically. So we did the first shot in the beginning and then we did the other one after that. Uh, and yeah, this is also, if, if you see from behind the scenes, I was able to have a platform outside the train. I was walking, uh, that, that, that's not the shot, I think, Jazz. It's the one in, uh, in Thailand where we start from outside the train and we go inside. So yeah, we built a platform uh, next to the train. And I walked and I went in with the camera inside the train. And then the, the next part was to start from outside the train and do the transition. So yeah, when you have also an overlap mixer on set from the video assets, it makes your life way easier in such type of transitions. Niels? Yeah, so again, a similar concept with the, the video for the weekends. It's a stitch shot. So there's, a, there's an A shot that is pushing into the car and then a B shot that's taking us out the other side. And um, I was very lucky to have the visual effects supervisor present on the set who's gonna handle the actual stitch and they know better than anybody what they need uh, to get it right. So uh, with that shot, we, uh, we started with, the, with what you see first and we're limited, we're finding out what our limitation is in terms of how far through the car we could push, but we knew that we wanted to push ideally to the point that you're not seeing the window frame on the other side. Uh, so we got as close as possible to that and I think we shot that over resolution. So there's a little bit of room for, um, you know, reframing to make the stitch more perfect later. And then, yeah, we're using uh, tools from the video village uh, from playback to, to overlay the end frame of the take we are happy with, uh, with what we're seeing live and about to shoot for the B side of the shot. And that way we can make sure that the perspective of the camera is in exactly the same place and pointing in the same direction in terms of height and everything. Um, it's up to me to, to remember the sort of the, the speed and the pace and the direction the camera was going in from previously and, and match that as closely as possible when you're doing the next shot. And uh, I think in, in the weekend video, you see that I'm, I'm, I start tracking right too soon. Um, so that's very close, but I could have been a little bit better about that. Yeah. And I'm, I don't know if you agree with me, Niels, but also the Trinity helps a little bit in having the horizon stabilized so that you can match cuts easily. Yes, absolutely. It's a, I think it's a more stable, more controllable tool yeah. and, and has more range of movement. So you can, mm -hmm. you can match things more easily with it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your answers. Now, this one is from, for Fava. What is the most challenging movement that you've done with the Trinity? Uh, uh, I think the the most uh, the most uh, the most movement that I really suffer. I the movement that I uh, explained before. We take a, take the roll from the window and go 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 down. Sorry, go go uh, go back and get into the get into the character. Because at the end, it was, uh, the DOP was uh, that movement very, very, very slowly, you know. And, uh, and as I say, the, the roll, when you make the roll, all the head move, move the sled, move everything. So um, you need to be very, very precise uh, at the time that you operate, that, um, that the DOP uh, don't feel that everything is moved. 
So I really, really uh, uh, sweat blood that day. And normally here uh, it's it's nice because don't don't ask you uh, craziness. Uh, I mean, if you go into the window or you walk or you even uh, run, I did that uh, one time and it was uh, it was not a good idea. Normally I start to to um, to train myself in uh, safe ways in this kind of things because. Normally, if you get, get into the here in Mexico, uh, sometimes you get into the production and they say to you like, "Hey, but uh, I, we want that you run with the with the with the actor." Like, what do you say to me that people? You know. So at the end, if you if you uh, run or make these kind of things, it's it's complicated if you don't have the the custom to do it. And uh, but the most. Uh, the, the, when I really suffer and more difficult is when the DOPs want to use the role because operate the Trinity with the role, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's not so easy. I mean, it's, it's not so easy operate Trinity. Even if someone made the role, I think it's more complicated. Wow, that is so interesting. Joe, do you have one from the audience that you want to share? Yes, I do. Um... This is from Titch Mabiri. Um, basically, they're asking, uh, how often do you have to service the Trinity? And um, when you when you do service, like what when you operate, what what seems to be like maybe the first thing that that may go down first? And do you believe in the the two and one one is none theory, meaning that you need to have two of each thing? You know, what I'm saying just in case one goes down versus having just one and then if it goes down you have nothing so uh i i one of my hesitations in getting into the trinity was was uh seeing that it's a more complicated tool than a regular steady cam is and for one thing it's electronic and has a computer in it and needs you know firmware and stuff like that compared to a purely mechanical stabilizer like a traditional steady cam uh, so I was I was nervous about that going into it, but I really have to give credit to to Ari and Kurt and Foma Systems because <laughs> I had to do barely anything to it. Um, it's it's really robust and really reliable, and it's been in some uh, very action situations with lots of dust and you know things like this, and it, it holds up fine. So I'm, I'm hats off to those guys. Yeah, and I, I can add something that the, for people who don't know, the same uh, Trinity, Trinity Steadicam, it comes basically from regular Steadicam. It's the same post, same top stage. So uh, for me, as a backup, I can always switch my Trinity to regular Steadicam. And I think Niels was the first one who switched the Trinity to regular Steadicam by using two top stages, which is the fastest way. And uh, yeah, because I can give you an example. I bought my first Artemis Steadicam cam in 2009. And when the Trinity showed up on, in 2015 or 16, I, I did the upgrade in 2017 and it was an upgrade only. I didn't buy the whole new system. I did an upgrade to my Artemis Steadicam cam that I bought in 2009. So basically it's coming from regular steady cam. So at any point, if you have any problems, you can move to regular steady cam. And answering about the maintenance, yeah, I personally had it for three years and I've been doing the worst conditions, heaviest chest on it. And I only do maintenance for my arm. That's it. I don't do, I've never done maintenance for my, for my Trinity as well. One, one thing though is there's a cable that goes from the head to your monitor and your joystick. And yeah, I have three of them. Yeah, that thing is pretty easy. <laughs> I have it. three. I have <laughs> four. <laughs> yeah, that's the right number. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I, I, I have, by the way, a couple. I have two sets of cables. I have a main cable set and another one of backup sets, a full, full backup sets cable. And yeah, for the joystick, I have three of them as well. Actually, one of the good things that the, the, the one of the good upgrades that they have for in the years, I guess, is the 24 volts upgrade. It's very, very nice. Nice to have that with this kind of uh, 25 or 24 volts cameras like Dennis or Mini LFs or LFs uh, Alexa. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's I had a situation difficult. where the production, they, they told me we're filming with an Alexa LF, with an Alexa Mini LF, sorry. And for the last minute, they couldn't find the Mini LF, so they wanted to have the big LF. And my Trinity at that time, that was two years ago, wasn't ready for the 24 volt. Yeah. So, and the shoot was like in 48 hours. So I called Ari in Germany. I said, I'm coming with my Trinity to Germany, guys. I need to do the upgrade to 24 volt in the next day. And yeah, as Neil said, like Ari and Foma Systems, they have the best service. So they welcomed me in Munich. They did the customs paper. They did my 24 volt upgrade and I flew directly to the shoot. So, because I was able to fly the big Alexa LF, yeah. But it's quite heavy with the Trinity, the big LF. So, it's a nice luckily, luckily, there's the mini LF now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Fair, do you have another question from the audience? Yes. Yes. Do camera operators ever talk to talent or set or on set or discuss complicated shots with a talent director? and how the talent has to block or move throughout the scene. I would do that. Yeah, that's a question for Christian. Nah. Jess yells at me when we're on set. She's like, she cracks the whip like, move faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that, it's just they're wearing the weight. So, you know, <laughs> be considerate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after the, the general ideas of the blocking for the shot are laid down, if there's smaller things that can be improved, I, I try to talk directly with the talent because usually, at least in my world, the director's a long ways away. Maybe they're at Video Village or something, and they're really relying on you to direct the talent a little bit to give them some notes so that the shot's better. If they're getting too close to the camera early on or something, um, it's it's very valuable to to the DP and to the director that you can speak directly with the talent to make the shot better. Yeah, Don't you? I've, I've been in situations where we see directors or DPs they are trying to explain the talent, the shot, and they are not being able to deliver the, the message. So I show up, I ask, can I explain it to her? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, do, do the whole job. So you end up explaining <laughs> the whole shot to the, to the actors. Yeah, you do it, you, you know how to do it, they say, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for that. Fava, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, and even even for the the fo for the um, uh, focus puller, it's very very complicated because when you put him down the the G, you know, uh, you go you go more near to the to the actor to the actress, and if the actress or the actor is not in the right position, it's very very complicated. And sometimes the DOPs or so, or more the directors are very impatient uh, to that, you know. And you need to learn more specifically, uh, specifically with, the, with the actors to say, please don't move, please. <laughs> you know. I did a, a feature film once where all but maybe less than 10, like five or so shots, every single shot in the movie is a lock off. And so the only real operating after you set up the camera was to speak with the talent about timing and placement. And thankfully they were very open to that. So. <laughs> Wow, that's, awesome. that's interesting. Thank you. Um, so this question is uh, from some of our steady school students. What would you tell, if you could talk now to your younger self when you were starting in the industry, what advice would you tell yourself? Wow, N nice question. Uh, I would say maybe one thing that when I was younger, I used to put a lot of pressure on myself and my body. A lot, way a lot of pressure and uh, effort on my body. I would say if, because I was so motivated, so I had the full energy at that time. And I was like, I used to work for 20 hours straight ahead, go from shoot to another, uh, get fully booked for like maybe 20 days ahead without any off days. So maybe I had to relax a little bit at that time to save the energy for, for the future. Maybe that's one advice. What about you, Fab or Niels? Um, I'm saying myself, drink less, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you need to sleep, man, you know. <laughs> no, no. Um, it, it, from the beginning to, till now, it's very nice and it's some kind of... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy 
to to see um, in the review mirror uh, all the all of these years. And at the end, I think uh, I I did not change uh, nothing because uh, at the end um, I I spent ten years in this business, six or seven, I guess, with this. Uh, uh, operator situation and from the beginning from the Jimbo's steady and Trinity or Trinity and steady I think it's a very very nice path only I think uh, I um, met uh, Trinity um, a little bit late you know because or understood the Trinity a little bit uh, late I I wish to meet Trinity in in 2016 or 17, you know, to to get it more faster, uh, the idea to to buy it to get it, but at the end, who, who's never know. And from uh, for for the moment, uh, I'm I'm happy with the evolution, and I try to understand as uh, I understood in 2013, 14, uh, that the, the camera stabilizes is tremendous necessary for everything, you know. Even if they gonna use a, um, a handheld or a tripod or whatever thing, in some moment they gonna, they gonna need, not gonna use, they gonna need a camera stabilizer, you know. So at the end, it's nice because uh, you prepare yourself for other circumstances. If you need to operate uh, as you uh, guys under the wire or drones or uh, on a bicycles, cars, jeeps, everything. So I am really happy to, to all of these years understand that to how to use the wheels, how to use the, all the, all the, all the options that, that you have. And also if you look at uh, uh, operators and DOPs like Farrers and Niels, they, they even Jessica, uh, they they not only uh, camera operators. I mean, camera operators. It means uh, a full uh, systems. You need to prepare yourself for everything. So that is, that is amazing, really. Um, if I could give myself some advice for the beginning, um, probably for now too, I would tell myself to uh, spend more time and put a little more effort into networking with the people you're working with offset. So, you know, when everybody goes to lunch is an opportunity to, to talk about something maybe isn't the project and, or maybe they're going out for drinks later, or there's a, you know, a way to go get a coffee with the DP you like, because if, if you can make the person feel like you're more than just coworkers, if you, if, if you feel like you're really friends, that will go a long way towards that person making you their first call. People have to remember that you're there. <laughs> yes, that's important. Thank that you. Very true. Fernando, you. do you have one more question for them? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have one more. Uh, what are your thoughts on people making their their own trinities with the gimbals and putting putting them on the top of the Steadicam? I think it's awesome. <laughs> I I love the innovation that I'm I'm seeing in that world and and people. Uh, you know, dreaming big and, and going there and refusing to say, oh, I can't afford that yet. You know, it's, yeah. it's absolutely critical to do what you can with what you have and do it as well as you possibly can. And that will open up doors for you. Yeah, I would say, uh, but as an advice, let's, uh, for, for those who are creating these uh, things, let's not underestimate the invention and the effort that took Ari and Kurt and Forma Systems to end up with a successful system like Trinity. Uh, especially in the operating system and especially with those pendulum because those pendulum and, and the systems that I always see on the internet they are trying to imitate the Trinity they don't have the pendulum and if they don't, they don't have the pendulum I don't understand how the system is working so uh, yeah they are trying to make a copy of the Trinity but I think so far the Trinity is the most successful uh, instrument in the market uh, until another one comes up but so far, there's no, there's still no successful uh, similar system to the Trinity in the market. I would say. Yeah, that's I very guess. true. It's a Lamborghini. It's very nice. <laughs> yeah, it is a Lamborghini, but 
there is like you said there's ways to make things work and sometimes yeah. you don't have the luxury of the trinity and companies like Cinemilled and these other third-party companies are coming out with accessories to help make a gimbal live on a Steadicam more comfortably and to help make that technology work. Yes, it's not going to be as seamless and smooth like what Kurt and the guys at Aerie came up with, but, you know, it is a workaround. One one caveat is is when you do start to get into the, you know, full-size camera packages, um, especially if it's not the mini, you, there are ways of putting, like, let's say a Ronin 2 or something on a Steadicam and, and having a similar... Um, similar rig, but when when you're using a full size camera, uh, I think the materials and the design the area has chosen are really critical because I've put on some alternatives to the Trinity that are are put together that way, and they're really really heavy, <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, the distance between the gimbal on the post and where the camera is is much shorter on those on those copies. So that really changes uh, your, your sphere of freedom to move the camera. You're really not gonna have the same experience as on the Trinity. And you have all this mass sticking out the back end that's making it really hard to operate. So uh, when you get into wanting to use a serious camera, I really, really highly recommend just the Trinity. I, I like four years ago, I, I used the, uh, I put the Movi M15 on a, on a, on a steady cam and it is not the same experience by far uh, from the Trinity. Trinity have a technology um, unique for this, uh, this kind of things. You can't really, you, you can mix the a gimbal with a normal steady cam or also all the all other g gears that is on the market, but it's not the same uh, uh, results, you know, it's not the same feeling, it's not the same, uh, uh, situation. Yeah, so, and I'm by the way, the the only the Trinity is the only self-operated machine because other other when when they put the movie on the steady cam, there's someone else operating it. So the Trinity is the only self-operated uh, equipment, I would say. Yeah, this is really true, and it's it's really critical when it when it comes to pan because you still have direct one-to-one -one control over the pan, and any other copycast system of of putting a gimbal on a steady cam. There's lag there, and you're always yeah. Fighting. They put a three axis gimbal on the steady cam. Yeah. yeah. So how how does someone come up with the money to buy a Trinity if they cost eighty thousand dollars? <laughs> uh, maybe I should answer that because I answered about my rate. I answered about <laughs> my networking. We know so, all your finances. <laughs> yeah. So I personally got the money to buy my first trick from my parents, by the way. So uh, yeah. They trusted me, they gave me the money free of charge, free of interest. And then when I started getting jobs, I, I came back home and I gave them back the money. So that was how I started. So yeah, maybe you can uh, seek for someone who trusted you, trusted your abilities, your skills, and maybe they can lend you money. Maybe you can get a loan from the bank or maybe you can find a company, a rental house who have already uh, an in-house study camp so you can make deals with them. You can you can always find that find that way. I, I want to believe that your parents now have a very nice gift, you know. Yeah, <laughs> other than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I will say as a steady cam op, you know, I, I I don't come from any kind of financial means. You know, um, was it like twelve or thirteen years ago? I actually was in a bad motorcycle accident, and. Uh, the money that I got from my motorcycle and the money that the lawyers were able to get for me. I turned around and got a small loan and I was able to buy an old EFP Steadicam rig from 1988 mm -hmm. for $22,000. Wow. So, okay, so, so that's how I got is, mine. Took yeah, a so the motorcycle tip, accident. That, yeah, the tip is like do a motorcycle accident. I didn't know how I was gonna <laughs> get a rig. I was working at Panavision yeah. trying to get a loan. Next thing you know, I got hit. <laughs> changed <laughs> wow luckily you're you're fine i would i would just add something that you know let's say you can come up with the money overnight there's some miracle to buy the trinity just as important to that is having the network of people that know to call you to do specialized operating yeah. and having the trinity is not going to get you the jobs it's it's having a 
group of people that think about you as a capable camera operator already. Yeah, and we yeah. developed that and yeah. probably earning the money that it takes to, to at least get a loan and buy the Trinity. Yeah, I agree with that. And I also give another advice, which is like uh, plan a path for you, plan a career. Uh, I would say start with, if you're not known as a Steadicam operator, if you get the Trinity first, the Trinity, as Nis said, won't get you jobs. So start with a regular Steadicam, uh, teach your body how to understand the muscles, how to work, how to operate. And then you can make the step and move to Trinity because it's a bigger investment. So start with the regular Steadicam, be well known, do some jobs, build a nice show reel. And then at some point and like make a plan for you and in one year, two years, you can upgrade to the Trinity. That's, that's a good strategy, I would say. Yeah. yeah. The, the Trinity is not going to get you jobs not knowing anyone just by owning it. I mean, unless, you, unless you're lucky. <laughs> first, you need to put the beers on the fridge, you know, and after you can drink it. Exactly. I don't drink beer. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting ready to wrap up. Um, thank you, everyone, for all the questions. And I'm sorry that we couldn't get to everybody's. But if you guys want to say some words of motivation for any, everybody that is watching, do you want to start, Fava? What would you say to everybody watching right now? Um, I just want to say that uh, uh, as everyone, we need to enjoy and love uh, the, the thing that you want to do. This is the most important thing. If you enjoy uh, uh, your job and, and, your, and use your, your imagination as far as say that you need to build a path for you, this, that is the most, most more important thing. If you want to be a Trinity operator, um, I think uh, you need to have in mind very clear that it's going to be hard, it's going to be very, very um, difficult, but at the end, as a ACD song, uh, if, if you're going to go to the top, you know, uh, you're going to, how, fuck, what is the name of that song? <laughs> Tell me, Fernando, you don't laugh to me. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm, I'm laughing at the situation, now you, man. But yeah, I think what, what is the most important I advice that I want to say? If you, if you, if what, what I'm saying before? Like, if, if you want to make it to to the top, you have to struggle, right? Like, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. That is the most. There important you go. Thing. There you go. ACDC. Yeah. Thank you for that, Fav, and thank you for joining us. What about you, Niels? What would you say? Yeah, I think the same thing uh, Fawel Far has already mentioned is, is, you know, becoming a Trinity operator is a, is a lofty goal and there's going to be steps to that along the way. It's not something that happens overnight. So um, get a sense of what those steps are going to be for you in your market and focus your attention on the first step and know that the rest will come. Thank you for your advice, Niels, and thank you for joining us. And Faris, what about you? What would you say? Yes, I would say uh, stay motivated. Uh, you can reach me whenever you want. I'm always there to answer your emails. Uh, my email info at fadiscorwani.com. So whenever you want, just feel free to text me. I can send you tips and tricks and teach you how you can go through it because it's, it is a tough market, uh, but it's not impossible to be there. So just show up, knock doors. As I said before, attend exhibitions. Be always there, be active, socially active uh spread the word about your work and people will reach you out and one day you will make it also i would like to say a big thank you for jessica and i really want to talk a little bit about study school because the idea of study school is really so smart and i i motivate everyone to go to study school if you want to learn it's it's a really nice idea because it's well put together there's focus pullers there there's camera operators there's actors so you can learn, you will feel as if you are on set. So study school and workshops also are the best thing to do. Uh, thumbs up, guys, keep it, keep it up. I'm re I was really happy I was with Niels, Faba, and everyone here, really to meet you all. And I wish maybe one day at a time we can have a beer in LA, all of us together, like post COVID-19. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, Cinegear for sure, 20, oh, yeah, yeah. 21. 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I promised you, Jesse, I want to visit study school and I'll be happy to, to spend one or two or three days at study school. I'll be happy to do that. Well, thank you. Support I you as well, it. yeah. I appreciate it. And um, we're, we're currently restructuring everything, but as soon as, you know, 
we're allowed to get back out there, we'll, we'll be opening back up. We, we tried practicing and testing the waters of opening up, but as a school and with Steadicam, and then you add the COVID, that's just too yeah. many liabilities at once. Yeah. And so it's just causing us a little bit of panic to where we don't want to put anybody at risk. So right now we're just online. And as soon as we're physically allowed to go out without being scared, then we're going to start physically teaching again. That's the only downfall about all this is we're on. I mean, it's good. It's bringing us all together though. You know, this yeah. Q and a stuff is getting us to introduce everybody from around the world, getting people to, to know who we are as a, as a culture and a camera team. And that includes people like Chris, who's an actor and also has stood in, but she's worked for Chimera Lighting and Innovative Cart. She knows who all of us are. She's, she's sold a lot of gear to us over the years, but I'm saying like we're all connected on every level. And yeah, so thank you. Yeah, and thank you, I'm, everyone. I'm always here for any support. Thank you, everyone. So uh, people are asking, Faris, if you could share your email address. Sure. It's info at farriscorbani.com. I write it in the chat room or in the Q&A chat, correct? In the chat in room. In the chat, yeah. Sure, mm -hmm. I'll send okay. it right now. And thank Fernando you. and Joe, thank you so much for being with us. You guys, you know, you have a bright future ahead of you and you have some amazing contacts and you've been networking and you've gotten into rigs and you know what finances and what physical demands are in store for you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for, for letting us participate in this, this webinar and hope to see you soon guys in person yeah and Niels, make a movie you've been, Niels, you've been doing a good job man you're one of the first people to invest in that damn trinity and you've been <laughs> killing it and i'm so proud of you why what are you saying you're muted <laughs> I, <laughs> I couldn't keep my hands off it you know like at the trade shows and things i just i couldn't put it down so i think i was there the day you walked over to the booth at city gear and was like yep I'm sold on it. I think you were going to get rid of your Merlin. Or, I'm sorry, not Merlin. Uh, Archer. Steady Cam Archer. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> but you had a Merlin, too. Yeah, I, I, and before that, on a, on a Steadicam JR with no monitor. <laughs> wow. that That's that plastic one before the Merlin. It was like a little toy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it really was. And it didn't even have counterweights. So it taped rolls of quarters to it. So. Nice. Nice. But yeah. All right. Well, I guess we're going to close it now. Thank you, everyone, for this session. It, it's been great uh, doing these Q&As. I'm glad we got to end it on a bang with the three Trinity guys from all over the world. And yeah, thank you so much for students. inviting us. This is, this is really great. Yeah, thanks a lot for the effort, Jesse. You're amazing. Again. You guys are amazing. Ah! Again. <laughs> oh, wait, let me take a screenshot of that. Yeah. You can't do it at the same time. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, but... Go on, Fa. Go on, Fa. Do it. Good, Fa. Come on, dude. It's all oh, I, ha I have to okay, do it. Yeah, yeah. Mark needs to do it with me, and then Fer needs to do it with Jess. Um, yeah, okay, it. that's nice. <laughs> it's all fun. This is so nerdy. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Stay you safe. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 See you soon. Bye.